All right, so today we are talking about reactions of alkenes and alkynes. And just a reminder, this is elementary organic. I put this um, disclaimer because when this is posted online, uh, the way we talk about reactions of alkenes and alkynes in elementary organic versus organic one is very different, okay? In elementary organic, we are not learning the reaction mechanism, whereas in full organic, we do, okay? A lot of these reactions occur in multiple steps, but in elementary organic, we're just learning the overall reaction. That's the main difference that we're looking at here. So that's why I make that distinction for when this gets posted online. All right, so let's look at some reactions of alkenes. Here are the ones that we're going to learn. Uh, we've got hydrogenation, hydration, halogenation, hydrohalogenation, polymerization, and then we're just going to very briefly talk about Diels Alder. Um, I don't know if we'll get to it today. So I'm actually going to even take that off. So I don't think we're going to be able to get through all of those today but we can definitely get through the first five. And if we get to Diels Alder today, great. Diels Alder is technically not in your elementary organic book. It's just something I like to introduce because it is a really interesting alkene reaction. So we've got hydrogenation, hydration, halogenation, and hydrohalogenation. Boy, those sound a lot alike, right? And here's something that I recommend that you do as we're going through reactions, because we're going to learn a lot of reactions in this portion of the class, something I strongly encourage you to do, just make yourself a table and add to it as we go. So I'd make a table, name of reaction, and obviously you can do it outside of class. So name of reaction, reactants, products, catalysts, and then important info. Just have columns, you know, so you have hydrogenation, a column for the reactants, a column for what the products are, or how to predict products. Any catalysts if needed, and then some important info. And I'll show you um, later on, I think there's actually a slide in here with a sample table of that. But if you make a table like this and you add to it as you're going, we're going to learn like 20 some reactions. And a lot of them sound similar, right? So if you make a table, react its products, how to keep it all straight for yourself, then it's going to be a lot easier to review for tests than trying to look at your notes with them all scattered all over the place. So if you have some sort of summary table, organize it in a way that makes sense to you. If you have some sort of summary table, it's gonna make life a lot easier for you. Okay, so addition reactions. All four of these are called addition reactions. They're from the same family, okay? So this family, it's called addition reactions. So all four of these come from the same family of addition. Where you've got an alkene, Okay, and then you've got some molecule, and what happens is the double bond becomes a single bond, right? So we've reduced the alkene down to an alkane, and then whatever A was is now on the molecule, and whatever B was is now on the molecule. So this is the general pattern of an addition reaction. This figure is from your textbook. Okay, you're taking the alkene, you're reducing it down to an alkane, and whatever A is is now on the alkene, whatever B is is now on the alkene, but of course now it's an alkane. And then there may or may not be plus some other product. All right, so there's the same thing again, just looking at it from the side. Alkene becomes an alkane, whatever A is gets put on the molecule, whatever B is gets put on the molecule, that's just from a different textbook. Okay, so here's hydrogenation. This is the first one, hydrogenation. You can keep this straight because you're adding hydrogen, right? Hydrogenation, adding hydrogen, H2. So if this is the generic reaction for an addition, for hydrogenation, A and B are the same, right? A is H and B is H, right? They're both H's. 
So what you're doing is you're just taking your alkene, whatever it is, let's pretend this is uh, 2-butene, right? You're taking 2-butene and you're turning it into butane, right? Because A is a hydrogen atom, B is a hydrogen atom, so A and B both get stuck on there. So you're taking your alkene and you're just reducing it down to a straight alkane. So if this were two, let's pretend that there is a methyl group here and there's the rest of the chain, right? Nothing's going to change to any of your substituents. You're literally just reducing that double bond. Now, you need a catalyst. You can pick whichever catalyst you want, okay? I'm not going to make you memorize, I mean, I'm not going to make you list all the possible catalysts that would work. You just pick one, okay? So platinum would work as a catalyst. Palladium would work as a catalyst. Nickel would work as a catalyst. Heat pressure, okay? You can pick um, which metal you want to use. You can pick either heat or pressure, okay? But you have to increase the temperature and you need some sort of catalyst. That makes this go faster if you want this to happen quickly. All right, so the catalyst here, again, you can pick. I'm not going to make you list all three. You can pick platinum, palladium, nickel, heat, pressure. We represent heat with a triangle, okay? Just triangle represents heat. So if you just want to write a little triangle over the arrow, that represents that you heating this. Okay, so if you're making your table, for your reactants, you would say alkene and H2, right? For your products, you would say alkane. And then for your catalysts, you could list all of these and just know that you just need to pick one of them, right? And then for your important information, well, that's just relevant to you. What do you want to write there to keep it straight in your mind? That's, that's up to you as a learner, okay? So for instance, here's 2-butene. We're adding one hydrogen to this carbon, one hydrogen to this carbon, We're using platinum as the catalyst. So now the product is just butane, right? We've taken the alkene, we've reduced it down to an alkane. And so this is how you get hydrogenated oils. If you ever look at your labels, right? If you're looking at labels, um, you're getting a substance that's typically a liquid at room temperature to now become a solid at room temperature. Why is this a solid and this is a liquid? Well, it's got different intermolecular forces, right? This is gonna have uh, much different IMFs than this would, right? These are gonna stack nice and neat, whereas this is a kink. It's gonna be flat here, it'll be zigzaggy flat, zigzaggy. That's not gonna uh, stack as well as these will, right? So this is a solid at room, no. Uh, actually, butane's a gas at room temperature, that's a bad example. But if this is a long chain, these are long chains, right? You're taking something with kinks in it and you're making it linear. So pretend that this is not four carbons long, pretend it's 10 carbons long. All right, so for instance, vegetable oil is a liquid at room temperature, but if we hydrogenate it, now we've made this product, shortening, right? That's the name brand, but that is a vegetable oil that's now a solid. We've reduced our double bonds down to single bonds that makes them solids at room temperature. Okay, that's how we get um, things that are typically liquid at room temperature be solids at room temperature and for us as cooks we utilize that property to our advantage. All right, so why don't you try this one? Butene is one I just did. Literally, we just did. So let's use something else. Let's do 2-methyl-3-hexene. Write a reaction for the hydrogenation of 2-methyl-3-hexene using a platinum catalyst and name the product. So write the full reaction. I'll pause the video and give you a chance to try it. All right, let's go over this one. So we've got 2-methyl-3-hexene. So let's begin with our reactant. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2-methyl, 1, 2, 3-hexene, right? This is hydrogenation. So what are we adding to this? Right, H2, right? So what's going to happen? One hydrogen's going here, one hydrogen's going here. Does it matter which one goes in which spot? Nope. So what are we going to get? What happens to this double bond? All right. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. So what's the name of our product? Well, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? This is just two methyl hexane. Right? Because there's no more double bond anymore. So I don't have to worry about anything else. We've taken that alkene and reduced it down to an alkane, and then that substituent just came along for the ride. Does that make sense? So hydrogenation is probably the easiest one, right? Because all you're doing is you're adding two hydrogen atoms. One's going on each of the carbons, so you're reducing that alkene down to an alkane. Any substituents that you had just transferred along with you. So if you had, let's pretend it was this. Let's just pretend we had this situation, right? That would transfer along as well. And then obviously we would adjust our name accordingly. Right? Whatever substituents you had on the alkene would go along with you. So oh, yes, I forgot to write PT over the aerial. Over the arrow, yeah. So the way you re represent that, I forgot to write the platinum. So you just write PT over there. Mm -hmm. okay. nope. That's just the catalyst. That's just there to make it happen faster. Yep, it goes. I left that piece of information off. All right, here are a couple more for you to try. Draw the product and name it. Draw and name. Zoom. Draw and name the product of each of these reactions. We're using platinum catalyst again. So H2 is our catalyst. So H2 is what we're adding, right? This is hydrogenation. So one hydrogen's going here, one hydrogen's going here. So this is a one, two, three, four carbon chain. So one, two, three, four. So the name of this would just be butane, right? Here, one hydrogen's going here, one hydrogen's going here. So my product is just gonna be what? Cyclo pentane, right? Good on how we did these two. And again, if there were any substituents, if there were substituents, right, those substituents would come along too. Right? Any substituents would go along with it. Okay. Now let's talk about, that's what I just did, halogenation. Halogenation is adding a halogen. So the halogen we're using here, Cl2, Br2, right? Those are the two most common ones you see. You're adding a halogen. Remember from the periodic table, group seven of the periodic table, FCl, BRI, those are the halogens. Right, so they are diatomic as gases. We're adding a halogen. So if this was, if we're adding, let's say, if this were chlorination, we'd be adding Cl, Cl, right? So one chlorine gets put right here, one chlorine gets put right here, okay? Uh, we don't need a catalyst, no catalyst required. And chlorine and bromine are the most common, what you'd see most frequently. So again, we're still reducing the alkene down to an alkane, but now we're adding substituents, right? Because this is gonna be a Cl, this is gonna be a Cl, so your product is gonna be, for instance, 1,2-dichloro. And then any other substituents you have to name in there as well. So let's take a second, draw and name these two products. All right, let's go over this one. Can I get rid of that? Yes, it's just going to be in my way. All right, 
So here, this would be halogenation using chlorine. So we would call it chlorination, right? One chlorine's going here, one chlorine's going here. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. You're going to get chlorine on carbon two and a chlorine on carbon three. Right, so what's the name of this? Dichloro-butane, right. Good, no catalyst needed. Here, one bromine goes on each of the carbons of the double bond. It was this one and this one on this one, but now I've drawn it here and here. Is this molecule different from this? If I put, let's pretend that that's not there. Is that molecule different from this molecule? No, it's not. That's what I was trying to get at. So what's the name of this? Cyclohexane, right? Don't forget the cyclo, since it's a ring. Good. What I was trying to get at here, right, is if you take this molecule and rotate it, whether you drew it like BrBr -Br or BrBr, -Br, it's the same thing. All right. Oh, okay. I thought I had another problem up there, but I don't. So this is something that you can do in the lab. And this is a great lab test. It's a really easy test that you can do experimentally to determine, let's pretend I give you this clear colorless liquid, right? I hand it to you and I say, does this contain an alkane, an alkene or alkyne? Well, this is really neat. This is an easy test you can do to figure out if you've got an alkane or if you don't have an alkane. You add Br2, Br2 is this brownish reddish liquid, okay? You add it, now there's no catalyst required. If you add it and it stays looking brown, does that mean that there was a reaction? No, there's no reaction. Br2 isn't going to react with your alkane, right? If it's, let's say, hexane, no reaction, it's gonna look brown, right? But if you add Br2 and it immediately goes clear colorless, what does that tell you? That there was a reaction. Now you'd have to do further testing to decide if that contains an alkene versus an alkyne, but you could know right away, is it an alkane or is it not an alkane? Right? Then you'd have to do further testing to decide if there's an alkene or an alkyne. But this is called testing for unsaturation, right? Because an alkene and an alkyne, those aren't saturated. They're unsaturated. Whereas an alkane is saturated. Right? It's got all the hydrogens, that you would expect. Alkenes and alkynes don't have all the hydrogens on the carbons that you would expect. So if you add Br2, you see it stays brown, that tells you it's an alkane. It goes in, you get clear colorless, then you know, hey, it was definitely not an alkane, it was at least an alkene. And then you have to do further testing to distinguish whether it was an alkyne or an alkene. But that's something you can do in the lab. Okay, the other two additions that we're going to talk about are hydration and hydrohalogenation. Now, they're called asymmetrical additions. You're going to get two possible products. So, let's do hydration first. Hydration. Think about the name, hydration. Oh, I'm so dehydrated. I need to go drink some water, right? Hydration is a reaction where we're adding water. Okay, you've got your alkene and you're adding water. So if you're making your table, what are your reactants? Your reactants are an alkene and water. Your catalyst is acid. You need to have acid. So we represent that by H plus. Okay, and you're going to get an alcohol. We don't know how to name alcohols yet, but we're going to learn how to name those week next week. Uh, two weeks from now, excuse me, two weeks from now. So we'll learn how to name alcohols in a couple weeks. They're not difficult to name. Right now we're just going to identify them. 
Okay, you've got two possible products. Let's think about why you've got two possible products. So this might be something you put in your notes section of your chart. If one hydrogen goes here and the OH goes here, right? That gives you one product. If the hydrogen goes here and the OH goes here, right? That gives you a different product, depending on where this is in the chain. So it all depends on where it is in the chain. That's why I say you've got possibility of two products. It all depends on where the double bond is in the chain. So like I said, here is the required catalyst, H plus, that's acid. Okay, you're still reducing the double bond down to a single bond. Now here, you're only gonna get one product. You're only getting one product because of where this double bond is located in the chain. Let's think about why this only gives you one product. If H goes here and OH goes here, that puts OH, H, OH on carbon two, right? If H goes here and OH goes here, that puts OH on carbon two. So either way, because this is in the middle of the molecule and it's symmetric on both sides, you're only gonna get one product. But let's pretend that this was not in the middle, it was not symmetric. Then you would get two products, you would get two unique products. And there is a way to distinguish there. So here's an example where it's not symmetric, right? In the previous example, it was a four carbon chain right in the middle, you only got one option, right? Because whether or not the OH goes here or here, OH is still on carbon two, no matter which way you count from. But here, this is three carbon chain, right? And the double bond is on carbon one and two. So let's look at our two options. You can have OH going on carbon number two and H going on carbon one. Or you could have OH going on carbon one and H going on carbon two. Do you see how this produces two products? One of them is the major product. That means the majority is going to be this one and only a small amount is going to be this one. There is a way to decide which one's the major product. And this is something you would definitely need to know. But first, before we get into how do you figure it out, I want to make sure you understand why you're getting two products. Do you see why there are two products here? Because OH could go on this carbon or it could go on this carbon, right? This is not symmetric. It's not like the previous one where the double bond was right in the middle and it didn't matter. You are going to have one product that's the dominant majority and you're going to have another product that's um, significantly less. And so we use what's called Markovnikov's rule. Markovnikov's rule. And so what this is, is an observation that, let's just look at, let's just look at this before I even get into it. The major product, let's look at where hydrogen is. Hydrogen in the major product went with the carbon that had more hydrogens initially or fewer hydrogens initially. This one's the major product, right? So this carbon had two hydrogens initially, right? Versus this carbon only had one hydrogen initially, right? The major product has hydrogen on the carbon that had the most hydrogen initially. So the easiest way to put it in like layman's terms to describe Markovnikov's rule is that hydrogen wants to go be with its friends, right? The major product is the one where hydrogen goes to the carbon that had the most hydrogen initially. And that means OH goes to the other carbon. That's Dimitri's observation. This is the way your book observes it. Hydrogen went to a specific end of the double bond. It went specifically to the one where the hydrogens were most present. Okay? And this works for adding water, H2O. It's also gonna work when we add acids, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Okay, so when you've got an option between two products, when you've got a product, but when you've got the option between two products, 
the major product is going to be the one where hydrogen goes to the carbon atom that had the most hydrogen initially. So if I said, I gave you this on a test, and I said, draw and name the product, I'm only going to be interested in drawing and naming the major products. Okay, I'm not going to be interested in the minor product. Do you understand how to distinguish between the major and the minor products? Now, you don't know how to name this yet. We'll learn how to name alcohols in a couple weeks. It's not very difficult to name alcohols. But right now, we're just looking at how do we um, distinguish the major product and the minor. So let's try these. If there is a major product, draw it. If there is no major product, then just draw what the product would be. Some of these, there is going to be a major and a minor product. Some of these, there won't be a major and a minor product. You decide. Okay, let's see if we got them right. So we're looking at the first one. Does one carbon have more hydrogens than the other? This is a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain. It's right there in the middle, right? This carbon has one hydrogen. This carbon has one hydrogen. Is one of them gonna give you a major product? No, it's not, right? And you can also demonstrate it to yourself by drawing both options and seeing if they're different molecules or if they're the same. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If you're on the fence, you can always draw both options and see are these the same molecule or are they different? So let's put the OH on carbon three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's the version where we put it on carbon three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's put it on four. Four. Are those molecules the same? Yes, they are, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. So is there a major product? No, no major product. So we could draw either one of those, because those are the same molecule, right? So you could draw either one of those as your answer. Now we don't know how to name it yet. So whether you drew that or that, it's the same thing. Okay, in number two, is there gonna be a major product? Yes, there is. Um, which carbon is gonna get the hydrogen? This one? I agree, right? Because it's got one hydrogen, this one's got zero hydrogen. So H is gonna go right there, and OH is gonna go right there. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. We've got a methyl group on carbon two, and we've got an OH on carbon two. We don't know how to name this yet. It's not hard to name, but we haven't talked about nomenclature yet. This one is a major product. So I'd only be interested in the major product, not the minor product. Is there gonna be a major product in three? No, no major product, right? Because if the OH goes here, or if the OH goes here, Right? Again, if you're on the fence, just draw both and ask yourself, are these the same molecule or are they different? Right? Are those molecules different? No, they are the same. So there's no major product. So in your table, if you're making the table for yourself, I definitely list Markovnikov's rule. As one of those special notes. Right, because that will be a deciding factor in terms of is there a major product or is there a minor product? You have to follow Markovnikov's rule. Hydrogen goes to be with its friends. It's the easiest way to just remember that, to put it in people terms. Right, you want hydrogen to go be with its pals. All right. Oh, I didn't have another example on there. The last type of addition we're going to talk about is called hydrohalogenation. Hydrohalogenation. That's kind of a mouthful. 
Think about, just remember, break it down. A halogen is something from group seven, and hydro, think hydrogen. So it's hydrogen and a halogen. So it's an acid, right? We're adding HBr, HCl, right? And we're going to produce a halogenated alkane. Now this is different from halogenation, right? Because in halogenation, it was Br and Br, right? There was no major product because you're getting one Br going on each carbon. But when we have one hydrogen and one bromine, you could get two possible products, right? And so we're going to follow Markovnikov's rule here again. Markovnikov's rule is going to apply to hydrohalogenation as well. Hydrogen is going to go be with the carbon atom that had the most hydrogens initially. If both carbons have the same number of hydrogens initially, then Markovnikov's rule is not going to apply. So here's an example using propene, right? Why is this the major product? Well, because this carbon had two hydrogens initially, right? This carbon only had one hydrogen initially. The major product is the one where hydrogen goes to the carbon with the greatest number of hydrogens initially. So two bromo, you know how to name this, right? There's no alcohol here. So you can name this product. Two bromopropane is the major product. So if I gave you this on a test, I would only be interested in you drawing the major product. Do we see how this works? It's following Markovnikov's rule again, right? This is the minor product, this is the major product. So, these are a mixture. Draw the major product and state the type of reaction. So this is kind of smushing a whole bunch of them together. Draw the major product, if there is one, and state the type. All right, let's go over these and see what we got. Is there going to be a major product in option A? No, right? Because what type of reaction is this? Halogenation. I also would have accepted chlorination. Because chlorine is the halogen that you're using, okay? So if you called that chlorination, I would have accepted that as well. The product is going to be what? One chlorine goes on each one of these carbons, right? So we're going to get one, two, three, Cl, Cl. Yes? We know how to name this too. Let's just practice naming. One, two, three. So what's the name of this? Right. Good. All right, what is the type of reaction in B? All right, this is hydration. It's reaction with water. Now I have left off any of my catalysts here. Is there a major product here? Does Markovnikov's rule apply? It does. Which carbon's got more hydrogens initially? Right. Markovnikov's rule is not going to apply because they both have one hydrogen, right? This is symmetric. So you're going to get this is a four carbon chain. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's going to go on carbon number two regardless, right? The name of that's to butanol, just as a preview of things to come. Okay, what's the type of C? Alright, this is hydrogenation. The two that students confuse the most are these two, hydration and hydrogenation, because they sound so similar. Right? These two are the ones that students mix up the most. I'm not sure why. I think it's because they sound similar. Keep hydration and hydrogenation separate, right? Hydrogenation contains hydrogen in it, so it's reaction with hydrogen. 
So what's the product going to be? That's it, right? So it's just cyclopentane. You good on these? I think there is another one I put for practice. Yep. All right, so I'm going to pause the recording. And again, I want you to predict the major product if one exists, name the product if you know how, and tell me what kind of reaction it was. All right, let's go over this one. Okay, type of reaction for A is what? Right, this is hydrogenation. So, what's the name of this product going to be? One, two, three, four, or you could have numbered one, two, three, four. We've seen this one several times already today. It's just, right, it's just butane. What type of reaction is B? This is hydration. A to the Does Markovnikov's rule apply? Yes, it does. Where does the H go? Well, let's split this up and write it as uh, that. Where does the H go? The one on that side. On the right. Right. This hydrogen goes here. The OH goes here. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got a methyl group on carbon two, and we've got an OH on carbon two. So that's two methyl, two hexanol. We don't know how to name alcohols yet, but I thought I'd throw that in there. See if you can start figuring out the pattern. All right, what type of reaction is this? I'd accept two answers. Halogenation. I would have also accepted bromination because that's just saying that you're using bromine as the halogen. Does Markovnikov's rule apply here? Nope. All right, because one bromine goes on each one of these. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. There's a methyl group on carbon two. And now there's a BR, and then there's a methyl, and then there's a bromine here. All right, so one, two, three, four. So what's the name of this? Two, three, dibromo. And then don't forget this methyl group. Two, methyl, butane. Good on that one. And then what type is this? <clears throat> Hydrohalogenation, Hydro right? Does Markovnikov's rule apply here? Yes. yes, it does. Let's split this up. Let's write it as this so we can see it better. Where's the hydrogen going? Left or right? right. On the right. Chlorine goes on the left, right? So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So carbon one just gets hydrogen. Carbon two now has a chlorine on it. And carbon three has two methyls on it. So is carbon three number one or is carbon two number one? Which way we number, from here or from here? We're actually gonna number this way now, when we name it, right? 
So what's the name of this? Three chloro two two dimethyl, right? We good on this one. All right. Okay. We've got enough time to get through polymerization today. Here's a summary of what we've talked about so far. What catalysts you need. All right, let's talk about polymerization. So poly means many, right? So when you're taking a polymer, when you're making a polymer, you're taking what's called a monomer, right? You've probably even heard this notation from previous science classes. You're taking a monomer and you're just repeating it over and 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 over. And over. Okay? And the nice thing about polymer reactions is that they're pretty easily predictable. And so I'm just going to put a blank slide in here. Let's just make a generic reaction. Let's pretend that you've got um, hydrogen, hydrogen. And let's put a Br here and a Cl here. Okay? So when you have a polymer reaction, this is reacting with itself over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Okay? So it's gonna react with itself. Okay, so a bond is going to form between here and here, all right, and then if this reacted with a third one, a bond is going to form here. Now what's going to happen to these double bonds? They're all going to go bye-bye, right? So you have C, single bond C, hydrogen, hydrogen. Cl, Br, right? Cl, Br, Cl, Br, right? Whatever. This is just going to keep going until you run out of whatever the reactant is, right? Whatever's on the one on the left is just going to be continuing to be on the left, right? So you can make a polymer, you can follow any generic pattern, right? If you want to put A and B, then in your final product, it's going to be A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, right? You can apply that pattern to any, any polymer you want, right? And you can make the polymer as simple or as complicated as you want. So long as you identify, okay, this is A and this is B, well, my product is just going to be a, B, A, B, A, B. So if you just look at your monomer and say to yourself, okay, what's A and what's B, then you just make the chain and put A, B, 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 and you're good to go. You're off to the races. So you can make your polymer, I mean, excuse me, you can make your monomer as easy or as difficult as you want. So what if I gave you this polymer? Let's pretend. Um, I gave you this polymer, we always just saw drop dot 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 to represent that it's going in all directions. And then I say to you, draw the monomer that was used, how would you identify that? 
Okay, so you have that. And then what's the other substituent? Because that's not the answer, right? And what, what kind of group is this? That's a methyl group, right? So you need to have a double bond, right? And then if that makes it easier to draw, you can draw them on the same side or the opposite side. It really doesn't make any difference to me, right? Because we're not showing cis trans isomerism here, right? That would be your monomer. Now, we're not getting specific, is it cis or is it trans? We're not going to worry about that. So is the question like, what was the original one? Mm-hmm. Okay. If I said draw the monomer, right, you just break it, break this bond, break this bond, break this bond. What are you left with? A carbon, carbon. That was originally a double bond. The substituent was a cyclohexane. This substituent was a methyl group. Now again, I'm not going to get you worrying about whether it was cis or trans. That's not something we're going to worry about on the tree organic. You just could figure out what's A and what's B, right? So you could say this is A, and then oops, I left one off. Wait, no, I didn't. This is B. You see what I'm trying to get you to see here? Okay. And this has a big role to play in plastics. This is something that you see in plastics, right? Because a lot of uh, plastics are polymers. And so this is from your textbook. This is a figure from your textbook. For instance, polystyrene, that's styrofoam, right? That's the uh, brand name. But a lot of plastics, too, are polymers, and the way that we recycle plastics deals with what kind of plastic you're dealing with. All right, so this is another figure from, there's polyethylene, plastic bottles, right? Polyvinyl chloride, like plastic pipes, PVC piping. So these are all, this is polystyrene, that's styrofoam. This is the brand name, plastic wrap, right? used to preserve your food. Mm -hmm. It is, it sticks, doesn't it? <laughs> right, so if I gave you, say, this polymer and said, all right, identify the monomer, right, you should be able to break it down and figure out, okay, one's gonna have, you're just repeating every other one, right? And a lot of plastics, you see these codes on it, right, that tells you what kind of plastic we're dealing with. And that's as advanced we're gonna get into polymers in elementary organic. That's as far into it as we're gonna go. So that's where we're gonna stop for today.